Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Um, I've been gone for a while and it feels like in the last month my life has kind of fallen apart around me. So trigger warning here, I'm going to be talking about the death of my mom. Um, and I just wanted to sit down and talk, sit down and do some makeup. I have not really put any makeup on my face um, in a long time. The video I posted on Instagram with the Persona Cosmetics uh, eyeliners I had filmed maybe two weeks before my mom passed, so it's been hard, um, but I just wanted to get on here because I was really enjoying doing YouTube again before everything happened, um, and I wanted to try and do it again. thought maybe I would find some some peace with it. My hair grew out a lot. It's been like two months. I'm getting my hair cut again tomorrow. I think I'm going to get it kind of like it flush with the bottom of my chin so probably an inch will come off. Let's do, let's do some makeup. I'm going to start with primer. I'm going to use this discontinued but not expired primer from Becca. This is the first light priming filter. I know Smashbox brought back the Becca highlighters and also the under eye correctors. Why don't they bring back this? This was my favorite primer of all time, forever, and when this is gone, it's gone. So, as you all know, I've been talking about it for about a year here. My mom was diagnosed with non-small cell lung cancer last year. It's the kind of lung cancer that does not come from smoking. My mom never smoked a day in her life. It's like a genetic mutation. So a lot of people can have non-small cell lung cancer, but there are mutations to everything. And my mom ended up having the most aggressive um, and rarest of these mutations. She was on this really expensive chemo drug called Tegrizzo. It was about $16,000 a month before insurance. We're very lucky that through some kind of grant or something, um, we ended up getting a company to pay for it. So my mom didn't have to shell at 16 grand a month to live which is just the whole process of my mom's illness really made me cynical against the healthcare system we have here in the US. It truly only works for people who have money um, or who have good insurance. I am off my parents' insurance in 26 now and my insurance is good, but it's definitely not. If I got what my mom had, I don't think I'd be covered. Um, I'm going to go in with foundation today. This is the Urban Decay um, Hydromaniac Tinted Glow Hydrator. I'm in the shade 20 Fair. So my mom was on this... Sorry, my hands are shaking now. Um, my mom was on this chemo medicine for about a year. And what they told us with the Tegrizzo was that this was going to target her specific mutation. So the cancer in her lungs and in her brain, because she did have cancer in her brain, it's... When I say it's aggressive, it spreads like wildfire if you don't catch it. A lot of people with my mom's kind of cancer don't catch it until it's in its final stages. We were just very lucky that my mom was like up to date on her health. She went to the doctors all the time. She had heart problems, so she was constantly checking up her heart. Um, and she knew when something was off. So we found out August of last year, my mom thought she had COVID. She went to the urgent care to get a COVID test. It was negative. Then they thought it was double pneumonia. So um, her doctor, her primary, said if it didn't get better that she should go to the hospital because that's how it would help her most to treat her double pneumonia. We get to the hospital. Um, basically, they say her lungs look... It looks like the worst case of COVID lung they've ever seen. They gave her another test for COVID, um, which came back negative. So then they were like, it must be an autoimmune disease. Um, I don't remember right now exactly what the name of the autoimmune disease I thought it was, was, but when they said autoimmune, you know, we were really scared, but then they clarified that, like, an autoimmune disease is manageable with medication. So we were like, cool, everything's good. Um, and then I remember my mom had, like, a consultation with the doctors. I thought it was to talk about this autoimmune disease, and I was seeing a friend in some part of me told me not to stay over my friend's house that night and to come back. And that's when my mom told me she had cancer. I'm really gonna try not to cry in this video. And she is the strongest woman that I have ever met and I think will ever know because she just took it on her chin and she said, I'm gonna fight this. 
So back when she first got diagnosed, the lung portion of the cancer was really evident. She um, needed oxygen. Her O2 levels were always at 70 and a healthy O2 level is like 96 and above. So she was on oxygen and she was taking steroids to stop the inflammation in her lungs and in her brain. And when she got on the cancer medicine, it seems to help. After a few months, she did not need the oxygen anymore. She was off oxygen. She was still on the steroids for quite a bit because they were trying to control what was in her brain. She was getting PET scans and brain scans every month just to check on the progress of her brain. Now, back in January of last year, they had started to tell us that her liver wasn't looking good, that the cancer had spread to her liver. The cancer was still spreading, but it looked like it was maintained with the chagrizzo. Um, so we didn't worry much, and my mom never wanted anybody to worry about her. I'm gonna use some Nude Sticks concealer. So we had a normal Christmas, um, which was her favorite holiday, and all she wanted in her life was to go visit Alaska. I had the pleasure of doing so when I was in fifth grade with this program called People to People International, led by Dwight D. Eisenhower and started by him. It was just um, like a program to teach kids about the world before um, they're too old so that we learn about other cultures and other peoples. And mine was to Alaska and she was so jealous. All she wanted to do was go to Alaska. So for Christmas, my dad um, said he was gonna take her to Alaska next year. Uh, when my brother got out of college. And, oh my god, I watched the video the other day and my mom was so happy. She didn't even realize till the end that it was a trip. She was just crying because we got her a sweatshirt that said Alaska. We got her a little moose to sleep with. She was so... She was incredible. Everything seemed fine. Until about June. In June, she started saying her back hurt her a lot. And... I, you know, was like, did you tell the doctor? They said, if anything changes, you should tell the doctor. Yes, 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 I told the doctor. Um, pretty much, no, she didn't really tell the doctor how severe her pain was. A four for my mom is pretty much like a seven for us. She does not want people to worry about her and she, she handles pain much better than I ever could. So her friend was actually the one who told the doctor that she was having really bad back pain. And she was like, she only, she never wanted to take like a narcotic, she never wanted an oxy, she never even wanted like a trazodone. She just wanted to take Tylenol over the counters, but she would, as soon as she could take the Tylenol, she would take it. Like I knew she was in pain. Um, so then the doctors were like, okay, let's do another scan. Let's see where the cancer is right now. What can we do with it? And by the time the test came back in July, she was getting headaches which was really concerning because my mom never got headaches before. And, you know, with brain cancer, like, that's that's a scary thing. Um, so then we started figuring out what we could do, what was the course of action. I had asked my mom to go to Sloan Kettering in Manhattan because it's, like, renowned. Like, you know, it's the best one around, and she hates Manhattan, so she said she didn't want to go. And I remember asking her, like, I know you hate Manhattan, but I love having you around. She's a stubborn woman, my mom. Um, so she did not go and in August they started a course of action on how to like effectively help her. And what it was was traditional chemo, brain radiation, as well as the chagrizzo. They were all kind of stumped, the doctors, because she went to a Sloan Kettering near us because this chagrizzo drug was supposed to do it all. like. It was supposed to just work. And at some point it was gonna stop working, but it, they didn't they didn't want it to stop working basically. Like nobody wanted it to stop working. And so it was like, well, let's just see after a few weeks, let's see after this. Um, and by the time it was like, oh shoot, like we need to we need to find a different course of action, it seemed like it was just too advanced at that point. So my mom had one round of chemo, which was twenty thousand dollars without insurance. And, um, then one day, she couldn't walk. She started getting lightheaded, and my dad was taking her to a brain radiation appointment. And my mom just fell, and she couldn't get up. She, like, could move her legs, 
but she could not place weight on her hips, if that makes any sense. She called it having noodle legs. So we took her right to the hospital because that's so... A week before she was walking, she was doing totally fine. Um, and then that happened. So they brought her to neurology first. They thought that it was a brain issue. Um, and they did some tests and they found that the cancer was really, really spreading in her brain. Um, and they really didn't want her to miss her radiation treatments, but she was in the hospital for about a week at that point. And, you know, we had, they had decided to do a spinal tap. And in that spinal tap is where we learned that my mom's cancer had spread to her spinal fluid. And if you read up on my mom's specific, um, genetic mutation, that's pretty much the end game. That's when it's over. So the headaches were super severe. They put her on a stronger medicine. They put her on trazodone. I had told her, like, you should ask for something stronger because she was still having headaches at a level four, even with the trazodone. And I was like, you shouldn't be having any headaches. We're in the hospital. Um, they sent her home and gave us, like, a wheelchair and a walker at one point. But, um... My dad had to take her back the next week to the hospital and um, she went to oncology and she was there for three weeks. They told us right before Labor Day that they were going to put a stint in her brain um, to get the chemo into her brain to do chemotherapy via the brain. So she had brain surgery on Labor Day and she came out fine. And I remember her face. She was like, I knew I was going to be okay. So we went home and everything was okay. And I remember feeling hopeful. I saw a rainbow and I said, it's going to be okay. And then a week later, she came home. She still couldn't walk. My dad had to help her onto a commode. Um, she slept downstairs because we have a two-story house and she couldn't get to the bathroom up here. And the Saturday before she passed, all of her friends came from, like, everywhere. From Rhode Island. My uncle from Virginia came up. And she looked so happy. I have a picture. She, she looked at me just to get a picture of all of us. And so I took a picture of everyone in the room. Yoshi came to visit her the next day. Um, that was Sunday. And Monday was fine. She had to get blood work before going for another round of chemotherapy. And on Tuesday, the blood work came back really bad. And they told us to call hospice. So we did. And hospice came... They brought her a hospital bed. They gave us medication to administer to her. Um, that Friday before she passed, she had called me downstairs and asked me to let her go. Hospice came on Tuesday and I slept downstairs to help my dad with medicine for her on Tuesday. And I wasn't feeling well, and um, I thought it was just because I was so anxious and so upset that I, I hadn't eaten or really drank that day. I wake up Wednesday morning, we have an aide come, and my brother was like, I'm not feeling well either. And so uh, it was suggested I take a COVID test, and it came back, I was COVID positive, and so was my older brother. But I was still taking care of my mom, so... For the last three days she was here, I had, I was wearing an N95 24 hours a day, taking care of her. And Thursday morning she had like a lucid moment. And so we got everyone around and we were all there with her. Sorry. And she said, I can already see heaven and it's beautiful. She kept saying, I'm at peace. This is a peaceful passing. I'm going on my own terms. 
and Friday morning at 1.22 a.m. is when she passed. I had promised her that I would be there with her until the end, and I was holding her hand when she took her last breath. Cancer is an ugly thing. And really, truly, it's... It's awful. And I don't wish it on anybody. But I know it's everywhere now. So... We had to make funeral arrangements. I was wearing an N95. I was still COVID positive. I was having symptoms. I was grieving. By the time we had the funeral, I was COVID negative, thank goodness. Um, and it was hard. It felt like, it still feels like, this is a nightmare. And that I'm gonna wake up and my mom's gonna be here. And it's not, I'm 26 and I lost my mom. I had been grieving her for an entire year because last October she was really sick and I used to go to the hospital to visit her and think this is the last time I'm going to see my mom. So I was gifted another year with her. And I would do anything for another day even, but that's not possible. So, I've been grieving my mom. I'm not religious. I don't know if I believe in a heaven. But the calm that came over me the night she passed to let me sleep. It must have been my mom. Because I don't think I would have slept that night. And sometimes, when I'm having a really bad day, I'll just talk to her. I'll say, Mommy, it's really hard. And then I'll get a phone call from a friend or something. And I think that's gotta be my mom. So, that's the first thing that happened to me. And then um, recently, my partner and I broke up after two years of dating. Um, that happened last week. And it was amiable, but it's still really hard. And we're gonna co-parent Yoshi, and I'm gonna be okay. But the double grief, double grief, it's hard to get my head, it's hard to get out of bed. It's hard to go to work. Um, it's hard to lose so much in such a short period of time. And now it's like a double whammy of I'm grieving my mom's passing and I'm grieving the loss of a relationship that was great. And missing my mom and missing my relationship and having to accept that neither one of those are gonna come back. I just did this really nice makeup base and I'm not gonna cry it off. I would do anything to, to live life three weeks ago when my mom was still here and my partner and I were still together, but we're not. And there has to be a reason for that, so. I have the best friends in the entire world who have let me call and cry <laughs> and say the same things over and over and over again, who have encouraged me to look at this as a positive and not a negative. Um, and I'm going to see my dog soon, um, so I'm excited about that, but it's been hard.
I did just take a half an hour break from this to take a call, so if I look a little different, it's because I put brow gel in my brows and um, I calm myself down a little bit. So basically, I think where I was going when I stopped this was that now I'm in this transitional period of my life where I would do anything in the world to go back three weeks and have the life that I had back, but that's not my life anymore and I have to accept it and move on. <sighs> it's been really hard, you know, it's only been a week since my partner and I broke up. My ex, I guess I call him now. It's weird. And I broke up, but um, there's been a lot of healing involved. I've been learning to do things that I like, finding out what those things are. Um, oh, I should do my eyes now. I'm going in with this ColourPop Darth Vader palette. I'm just going to do a little something something because I got a really nice Fenty lipstick that I want to try. So it's going to be a basic eye look. But... Um, I had my friend Elise read my tarot cards. I was very nervous to do so because I felt like... Oh, I also got called for jury duty. Like, so many bad things happened all at once that I was like... This can't possibly get any worse. But I was afraid if I was like, hey, could you read my tarot cards? And she always said, like, don't ask me to do it if you're not... If you're not going to be able to accept the outcome. So I was, I was really nervous. But she read them and basically what my tarot said was that I'm in incredibly choppy waters right now, but there are clear waters ahead for me. Um, that now should be me focusing on my craft. Um, and uh, I, I don't know the card names off the top of my head, but one had to do with writing. So it made it seem like focus on writing, which has been bringing me a lot of joy lately. And um, that's where I'll find success when the water's clear and aren't so rocky. So, um, that was, that was nice. It gave me some kind of peace of mind. It's just, I never foresaw either of these things happening. My mom was great, and then within three days was dead. Um, I did not expect that. She didn't expect that. I was reading through her text messages, and she said that she thought she had years, not months, I didn't expect my partner and I to break up, but sometimes things happen for a reason. I will find my way one way or another because I have to. And um, I just hate, <laughs> I'm a Taurus. I hate change. Change is like the scariest and worst thing in the world for me. I would do anything to never have any change happen in my life, which is so bad. Like, I hate that I'm that way, but I hate change. I hate change with all my heart, and I think that's why I stay in situations that don't feed me for long, longer than I should. Um, not That's not a shade of my past relationship at all. It just means, like, in general, I stay at jobs I don't like um, for too long. I um, stay in friendships that don't feed me or serve me for too long. I just put myself in situations where I'm not happy, but then I'm afraid that if I, like if that person leaves my life, like a friend leaves my life, or if like the job leaves, it's going to be way worse than, than my life now. And I can handle what it is now, and I can't handle what it is after. I hope that makes any semblance of sense. But, you know, I have to now figure out how to, like almost date myself, and decide like what I want to do, and figure out what I want to do. And know that my mom is watching over me. If I can impress upon you all one thing from this, if you have a good relationship with your parents, like, cherish them. Because, like, when I was younger, my mom and I did not have a great relationship at all. I thought she hated me. Um, I wasn't very easy to deal with either in my teen years and I look back at those times and I'm so sad because like obviously like growing up is so hard and I don't know how I would have done it any differently than I did. I you know I don't but if I could go back and tell myself like you only have a few more years. I, I would. 
I would in a heartbeat. So if you have a good relationship with your parents, just cherish it and cherish them because I did not realize how much of a gap um, would form in my heart and in my life with her gone. Like, I wish she was here for me to talk to about my breakup. I decided to sign back up for Actors Access, which if you're not an actor, it's like a site that people post um, breakdowns on, which could be like 16 woman, uh, Ellie is trying to find her way in life, um, but gets stopped by her boyfriend, Ty, or something like that. And then you're like, oh, you know, I think I could play this character. And then you submit yourself. And if they look at your headshot and resume and think, oh, this could be a good option. Let me see. I want to see something from them. They give you an audition. <sighs> I checked my email the other day and this like role came up and I was like, this role feels like something I can do. And I'm excited about it. So I signed back up for Actors Access because there's two tiers. You guys don't need to know all this, but you have to pay every single time for every submission and for one, and then you have unlimited submissions for the other one. It's just cheaper to do it this way, honestly. If you submit more than 10 times, it's worth it. Um, and I got two calls for tapes, and they're both for paid gigs, which is wild. Um, I had done in April an unpaid student film uh, for Pace, like upstate New York Pace, and it was such a good experience. I like had such a good time. I was just so nervous with my mom's health, like pursuing that, going on to a set, getting COVID and giving it to her. Truly, I've just been so afraid to give my mom COVID that I've, I kind of stopped my life for her. Um, and I think that was the right choice because I had way more time to spend with her. But now that she's gone, I know she'd want me to, this is such a beautiful shade. Now that she's gone, I know she'd want me to pursue my dreams. So. I'm, I have two monologues, not monologues, I have two scenes to memorize, and then I'm going to film them, and, you know, like, in my past, a lot of things that would stop me was, like, what if I get this, can I do it? Meaning, like, can I take off work, because I do need the job I have right now for my health insurance, um, can I travel, like, can I get there? Um, it was a lot of self-doubt, and... I looked at these two things that I got called uh, an audition for and I was like, I'll make it work if I get it. But like, they're seeing dozens of people for every call, if not hundreds, depending on. So it's not guaranteed that I will, but getting the auditions is helping me hone my craft um, and get out there again into the world. So that's, that's what I'm gonna spend the rest of the night doing. I'm gonna learn auditions again and they seem like really interesting cool characters i am 26 but i still play 16. it's so funny pre-pandemic okay i was 23 at the time i remember i was taking a class in new york city on doing like self-taping um for film because self-taping was becoming big pre-pandemic and i had submitted for something and they called me in for like uh i had sent an audition and they called me in for an in-person callback for a 13 year old, <laughs> which is why I don't feel like I look 13. Um, and sometimes I'll look at things on like the TV and I'm like, oh, these people are not the age they think. So then we always think we look younger than we are or we look older, like High School Musical. They were not 18 <laughs> when they did that. So, damn, this is a nice little, little look she got going on. I went with some bold brows today. I stand by the bold brows. Um, so I did that. I signed up for a logline class um, for screenwriting because I don't know if any, I don't know if I've like shared this on here, but I've been co-creating this pilot, this TV series for seven years or since 2016, which is a long time ago, maybe 2015. It's been a long time. It's been a long time. And, um, we had created a pilot, I had written the pilot, and submitted it to some competitions, and we had place as a quarterfinalist in this specific sci-fi fantasy competition. And I was like, I feel like I, I need more notes. And so I did, and I got a lot of really creative, like, really, really good notes. They kind of tore my pilot apart, but in a great way, because I rewrote the first scene, basically. The first, like, chunk. 
the first thing you see like when you turn on the tv and they have that first chunk before like the credits roll that bit i rewrote and i was like damn this is good um but I don't know how to write a logline. Like, I didn't go to school for screenwriting. I went to school for theater. I understand how plays are formatted. I understand how synopses are done. But a logline is like a one sentence thing. Um, so I signed up for a class for it. And that's happening later today. And I'm excited and I'm gonna, you know, work on this logline. And I'm trying to put together like a portfolio and then I'm gonna submit for like writing rooms and fellowships and opportunities. Cause I love writing and I'm good at it. Um, I love acting and I'm good at it. I just need to believe in myself more. And I I love history and I'm good at it. And I have been slacking on my TikTok because I let the comments get to me. I got really discouraged, um, but there's always gonna be haters out there. And it's TikTok, which is like the most hater oriented app. So I'm gonna get back out there with that. And I love YouTube. I fucking love YouTube and I love makeup. And so, if I'm going to fall in love with myself again, I need to put energy toward the things that make me happy. And I'm on vacation this week, so why not? <sighs> so my life got turned upside down, but I'm trying to get out of it. I've had a lot of friends give me some great recommendations on like how to perform self-care. My friends tell me it's okay to cry and to be sad and to like miss, obviously miss my mom. I'm going to miss her for the rest of my life. Um, but like miss the relationship and I will and I do um but I have to look at this as like I don't believe in God but I do believe that everything happens for a reason and there must be a reason for this so I'm just going to take this as a Megan needs to grow this is how I'm going to grow and I've almost hit a thousand followers on Instagram, which is wild because I've had that Instagram since I think 2016. Um, I've just been learning and like experimenting and doing whatever the heck I want to do on it. And I guess, I don't know, it's doing something. So, all right, the real, <laughs> the whole reason I wanted to make this video. I got a Fenty lipstick and this is one of the like holiday collection shades. Um, Elisa and I went to Ulta. We like kind of retail therapy a little bit and uh, I've been looking at a Fenty lipstick for ages but this packaging, this component is exclusive for the holiday season. Usually it's um, silver or like a matte black but this one's purple and the shade is like a beautiful deep wine. So I'm excited. First impressions of the Fenty lipsticks. Wow, what do they smell like? They smell like another Fenty product. What a familiar smell that is. And I think it looks really nice. It feels very much like a winter, winter look that this is and that's exactly what this look is. So I did attempt to do my hair a little bit <laughs> uh, before I started filming this so it's like a little curled again I'm getting my hair cut tomorrow I'm getting it cut about an inch shorter and yeah okay so that's where I've been and that's what's been going on in my life and um, to everyone who has ever lost someone or knows someone who has cancer just know that you can always send me a message you can DM me on Instagram um, you can comment here we can talk it is one of the hardest things I think that I'll ever have to go through and I felt so alone for a long time because no one understood the pain and the anxiety and the fatigue of that long game which is cancer and hoping for remission so if I can I just want you all to know that you're not alone that I feel all of that um, and I know what you're going through and if you need me, I am here. Because if I could help someone feel a little bit less alone, then that's important. My mom's... Some of my mom's last words were... Love is the most important thing in the world. Love and kindness. And I want to be kind. And I want to lead with love. So... That is it for today's video. <laughs> 
It's gonna be a hell of a one to edit. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll be back with some more content soon. Um, thank you for watching. Subscribe if you want to, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye, y'all.